Woodenville to Westlake. This is Cairo Radio, 97.3 FM. News and talk, powered by the Pacific Northwest. News as we see it, brought to you by Chevrolet Puyallup and Everett. This is the Ron and Don Show on Cairo Radio, 97.3 FM, Seattle Seahawks Station. Oh, good afternoon, Seattle and Tacoma and Edmonds. All our friends at Olympia, 306 right here, right now. He's Ron and Don. There's your introductions. Hey, uh, you want to talk at us? Do it. 98973. That's the Online Trade Academy text sign. It is open for you. Sean's here doing what he does. He saw Bohemian Rhapsody over the weekend, like a lot of people did, which is kind of a surprise. He'll tell you how much he loved it or didn't love it. A little bit later in this hour. Heather is here. News break. She'll break in. Tracy Taylor every 10 minutes. The news as we see it. All right. Special edition election coverage all night long starting at 5 o'clock tomorrow night on Kyle Radio. Dave Ross will leave the charge. We're on Facebook Live right now. The Ron and Don Show at Kyle Radio. In fact, uh, here's Ron with a very special. What are we talking about here from Election Age? Both my parents are turning 80 next summer. They retired in Florida, and yes, my dad sometimes wears black socks to the beach. Uh, They've been volunteering to work at their local voting center every election for almost two decades. You still got to go in and vote in person there. I was talking to my mom yesterday, as I do every weekend, and she said she was exhausted. Usually they have around 200 voters per day in their little spot, even during presidential elections. This midterm, it's almost five times that. They're seeing upwards of 1,000 people a day. That's a lot of assistance helping gray hairs figure out how to use a voting booth. You listen to Cairo. I don't need to tell you how to vote or even that you should vote. You already know that. It is interesting to me, though, to see how motivated people are to exercise their constitutional rights this time. It feels like there's a lot riding on the midterm elections tomorrow. If you look at just the raw numbers, America as a whole is slightly more liberal than it is conservative, at least looking at the last presidential votes. If you extrapolate it out to the non-voters, it begins to skew even more liberal. Young people tend to live in big cities. Big cities tend to be more liberal than rural areas, and less young people vote than the older demographics. The coasts have the vast majority of the population, and they both lean liberal. The middle of the country has far fewer people, but can flex outsized power and control in elections. Hence, all the hopefuls going to Iowa all the time. But through a combination of our antiquated electoral college, some gerrymandering, and shrewd politics, the minority is in power in all three branches of government right now. And they are fighting like hell to keep their power. Some of their tactics seem to have poked the bear. History is bending towards more inclusion, towards more rights, and less religious constraints. History is also riddled with forces that try to stem the tide of that lean. They usually fail, at least in the Western world. Tyrants and dictators around the world can make life miserable for their unlucky populations, but I digress. Who in their right mind admires tyrants and dictators? Even if you don't follow politics closely, and I count myself in that camp, it's going to be quite a week. Buckle up. There are many big moves coming down the road. It might be bumpy for a minute. Let's try and keep the wheels out of the ditch. Yeah, stay here. Yeah, we're going to talk to Dory here uh, in a moment. He's mad as hell uh, when it comes to policing. In fact, he had an officer over the weekend walk up to him and explain to him that there's a lot of deep policing right now and why. So we'll talk to Dory Monson here in a minute, our noon man. Uh, I, I have to be honest. When I was younger, when I, and even as I got older, I was one of those people that thought voting was a good idea and then just didn't get to it. If you look at my voting record, it is pretty horrible. But when they started putting people that I knew in body bags, when they were fighting in places like Iraq and Afghanistan, I said, you know what? I have never worn a uniform. I have never represented this country. The least I could do is check a couple boxes, get out a stamp, put something in the mail, And that's when I started voting. Uh, There's some articles out today that say if you get a sticker, that motivates people to vote. Also, every once in a while, have you ever got one of these in the mail or it says, hey, your neighbor has this kind of voting record. They vote in 82 percent of all the elections. How are you doing? And typically I'll look at that and I'm like, I'm competitive. Uh, So nudge. Yeah. yeah, So what what about you when you were younger? And I think and here's the thing. I'm not surprised that there's older people that are coming to see your mom and dad. Right. A lot of younger people. Five like, times the amount, though. Yeah. Is, oh, is surprising. A lot of younger people, we think it's a good idea to vote. And then a lot of times it just doesn't get done. 
and a lot of people that are being polled right now are millennials. Will the millennials show up? Because at one point we were all millennials, and the voting record says we didn't show up. Uh, my voting record was was pretty solid. Was it until when we moved around America? Yeah. A lot of times you, it took a while to get your driver's license switched over and all that stuff. Yeah. So there were a couple that I missed, but for the most part, I, I did like to vote. Uh, and I do think we are seeing in states that have early voting, like Florida. In states that have where just the polling, in states like ours where you can mail it in, you are seeing more uh, young people vote. I think the interesting one I watched, if you watched 60 Minutes last night, uh, you saw the story about the state of Texas. And you have a Democrat who's taking no PAC money, has no national Dems coming in, uh, no money coming from big advertisers or big uh, sponsors. And he is counting on the young people to override and to help him uh, you know, win that seat. So that race is super interesting to me yeah. now. All right, coming up, uh, Dory Monson has stayed in the building for an extra couple minutes. We'll talk to him. Of course, he's our noon man, noon to three every day. And uh, he said he had a police officer tell him over the weekend that they are de-policing right now in the city of Seattle and that I think he's a part of it. We'll find out what's going on there with Dory. And don't forget election coverage tomorrow night. Starting at 5 o'clock, Dave Ross leads the charge. In fact, we'll talk to Dave a little bit later right here on Kyle Radio. This traffic report this hour brought to you by Seattle's Morning News, which Dave Ross is a big part of. Tracy Taylor, what do you see? Definitely a-